it's really boring um, to some extent. You know, living through history has probably never been so dull because it varies a little bit for personal, from person to person. Everyone's experiences are different. In our community, we have been in the strict form of lockdown, which means we're not meant to leave our homes since the 1st of April, so more than a month now. Um, we are, however, tested every day, so usually somewhere between 8.30 and 9 a.m., somebody walks through in a hazmat suit with a megaphone calling different house numbers and then we need to drop everything and run downstairs queue up to take a pcr test that is done in the throat not the nose thankfully um, and then the rest of the day we're at home um, we have had some issues in our community where people do come down to smoke or to gather in groups and chat so the other thing that we have very often is somebody walking up and down our lane with a megaphone with a recording kind of extolling us to obey the restrictions and to not leave our homes don't come down to chat don't come down to smoke only come down to do your test um, it's a quite a monotonous kind of background i would say that the work weeks or the work days are slightly better than the weekends or the holidays because at least you know you're working and there's online school for some of the children um, but it's uh, pretty pretty monotonous and intense and you know i can say also after only leaving my home to do to do COVID tests for more than a month, you, you do get a, a bit um, stir crazy. Yeah, and just physically not to be active in any way. You you've got two small children in an apartment. It must be very difficult to explain to them while they why they are locked up. Yes, you know they have had a lot of frustrating moments for children, and you know I have little boys. They want to be running outside. The weather is getting nice and inside. Um, the only time they get to be moving outside is when they go for their COVID tests. We let them go on their scooters to the test so they, they get that kind of bit of movement. Um, their football club has done some online trainings for them. And I try and make them do exercise every day. I find little videos for us to do or something to try and keep them active. They don't love it, but I feel like after so much time, that much inactivity is just really not great for young children. Yeah. The food supply has been very complicated. Uh, give us a sense of what provisions you have. Are they very basic provisions? What have you run out of? It's uh, been a really challenging and actually time consuming um, part of this whole experience. So the food insecurity in the beginning when the lockdowns were extended beyond the initial four days was actually quite stressful. Um, mostly again, because I was more concerned about making sure we had enough for the children and we were running out of fresh food, fresh fruits, fresh vegetables. We did have frozen food because we'd stocked up on it, but we live in a community with some elderly or more um, vulnerable people who don't have resources and they were really um you know running out of basic supplies and there was real concern and real hunger so when we were able to get some food we shared it of course with our neighbors and that has been one bright spot that neighbors really share we do a lot of bartering um you know there's kind of a community group chat and people say what they need and then they can exchange for it i will tell you that coke is more valuable than pepsi for sure in exchanges but that was you know i guess it's a surprise to some but uh, the, the cola wars were definitely decided at least in shanghai um you know and it's it's been a now that we have group bulk buying through our community, it, it is a bit better, but you need to hit a certain number of orders in order to get the delivery. And what you can get delivered and when is always a little bit hit and missed. And so, you know, for us as a family, um, we're a, a Dutch family. We're accustomed to eating cheese, for example. We live in a very local community where cheese and butter, those types of things are not high on the priority list. So we had a period of time that we couldn't get those things. Um, and I, I, I will say we have also gotten some supplies from the government uh, in addition to our own purchases but I'm not sure I'm ever going to eat cabbage again after this experience <laughs> because we have had more cabbage and you know I, I like cabbage but there's there does become a point where it's it's just enough um, so I think not having control and then spending a lot of time and energy trying to keep track of bulk purchases and then every once in a while you'll have this amazing moment where you can find something that you can order in a smaller amount for a private consumption but it tends to be very expensive. Mm. I mean, you're trying to, to leave China. How complicated is that during this kind of lockdown? 
Mm -hmm. We're not leaving China permanently. Um, we will come back and continue to live here, but we've decided to push forward our departure for the summer when we'd intended to go visit family because of the situation. In particular for the children, they can return to in-person school in the Netherlands and also just have a slightly more normal life. Um, it is a little bit complicated, but there's now been enough people doing it that you can kind of follow the paths of those who, who've already done it. You do need to get a special permission from your neighborhood committee to leave the community. Um, my neighborhood committee has indicated they will provide it to us. Uh, getting to the airport itself can be quite complicated because public transport is closed. There are now maybe a few taxis starting to be on the street. I don't know, I haven't been out on the street in a very long time, but um, you have to kind of book a car that has the permissions to cross districts and to actually get to the airport. And when people were first starting to leave several weeks ago, they were charging exorbitant fees. Um, now it's slightly more reasonable, but there's just a lot of logistics and you need um, a PCR test and also an antigen test before you get to the airport and then to, to board your flight. So it feels very overwhelming when you look at the list of things you need to do. But actually, from what I've heard, once you just kind of tick off each item on the list and get to the airport, it people are departing yeah um, unless their flights are cancelled which of course is a risk <laughs> and because then they get stuck do they not just get sort of stranded at the airport they're not allowed to go back that, that is a real uh, concern because once you have the permission to leave your community, it, again, it varies slightly based on the neighborhood committee, but in, in theory, you are not then able to return home. So, um, you know, if you, then your flight is canceled, you are stuck uh, at the airport um, or you can try and find an airport hotel, but that can also be tricky because not all of them um, will accept foreigners. Have you been surprised at how publicly people have been venting their anger? Yes and no. What I've been surprised to see is just the fact that um, it's taken on kind of a life of its own to some extent. You know, you really have seen um, people, particularly in, in my community and in others I've talked to in Shanghai. You know, Shanghai is a really industrious city. It's been proud of being, you know, the economic powerhouse of China, of being well-functioning, of being orderly. And so when we first went into lockdown, you know, people believe, trusted the government and believed that this would be a four day lockdown and that very soon we'll be back to business as usual. So the disillusionment and then the frustration with the way it's been kind of very clumsily managed um, is something that's been noteworthy to me. Um, also, candidly, though, when people are hungry or frustrated or, you know, can't get out of their homes, it's inevitable that that will rise to the surface. And, you know, my heart actually goes out to the neighborhood committees and the volunteers who are actually trying to implement these policies because it's very hard for them too. And they have a lot of pressure um, to, you know, maintain order and to obey a, a, a kind of range of rules that seem to be changing quite often. And there's a lot of um, leeway at the, at the local level, but that also puts a lot of pressure and responsibility on those individuals, many of whom, as I said, are volunteers. So it, it pressure for everybody. Um, you know, I think most people try to find some sense of grace uh, and humor because otherwise you would probably lose your mind. Maddie, um, uh, let's hope you do get out uh, and have that break that you've, you're, you've been trying for. Appreciate you giving us a sense of what you're going through. Thanks so much. Thank you for having me.